911, where is your emergency? Yes, this has been a uh, fight and a shooting. There's been a fighting and a shooting? Yes. What's the address? Um, yes. Okay, and what exactly happened? I was coming, coming home. There was a alarm in the system. I swiped an engine to home, and I was coming. I mean, inside, I would have to find out what was going on. I turned off the electricity, but I had the electricity turned off. She didn't want me into the house. I got into the house, and my son attacked me. He was on home with her. He attacked me. I had my weapon on me. He had they attacking me. I had to, basically, I had to, I basically, I shot him. You shot him? Yes, I shot him and his mother. He's still alive right now, but his mother's not. I don't know. Uh, she could be alive. I don't know. Keep your hands up above your head. Keep backing forward. Investigators say the suspect was waiting for them when they arrived on scene. Welcome to Explore Crimes. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon for more stories. This is the story of Marsha Ebanks Williams, a woman whose life was defined by love, compassion, and a tragic end. Marsha Ebanks Williams, born in Jamaica, moved to the USA at 16, eventually settling in Florida. Known for her warm heart and deep faith, Marsha earned a degree in organizational leadership and worked as an administrative supervisor and life coach. She was the beloved host of the podcast, Marsha Talks, where she discussed mental health, family, faith, and love. Hello, beautiful ladies. Matthew 5, 16 says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. This season on Officially Marsha Talks, we want our light to shine so bright. So guess what? We are going to deal with every hurt, every emotional hurt, every anger issue. We are going to deal with it in this season. And if you do not tune in, you will not be able to get what God is trying to do for you in this season. He wants to heal. He wants to deliver. He wants to set you free. So guess what? Join me on Life Network for Women as we heal together in Jesus Christ. See you then. Marsha was not just a career woman. She was also a devoted mother and grandmother. She had one son, Robert Adams, who was born when Marcia was quite young. Despite the challenges of being a single mother, Marcia raised Robert with immense love and dedication. Robert, 28, was a devoted father of two young children and shared his mother's passion for faith and community. Marcia and Robert were inseparable. They attended church together and supported each other through life's ups and downs. Their bond was strengthened by their shared faith and mutual respect. In 2012, Marsha's life seemed to take a turn for the better when she met Michael Williams, a charismatic motivational speaker. Their relationship blossomed quickly, and they got married, forming what seemed to be a perfect union. Michael and Marsha's powerful synergy seemed perfect. Michael, the founder of Kingdom Citizen, was a renowned motivational speaker. Hello, Kingdom Citizens. This is once again, Michael D. Williams, Kingdom Citizen. Kingdom, in the Kingdom of God, I am who God has called me to be. And I'm here with simply a reminder, a reminder of who God called you to be. Michael and Marcia seemed like the perfect couple to everyone who followed their podcast and online content. They co-hosted officially Marcia Talks, sharing advice on spirituality personal growth, and relationships. Their chemistry was undeniable. Mike. Hey, Marsh. What's going on? What's new? Um, well, I was thinking about switching the name from the singles ministry. What are you going to call it? The unmarried ministry. The unma Why an unmarried ministry? Because every time someone mentions a singles ministry or singles, they think about dating. They asked about, are any men going to be there? Michael's powerful speaking style paired well with Marsha's warm and caring nature. They laughed together, supported each other, and appeared to have a strong, unbreakable bond. Why you act like you don't want to do this with me? This is not well, right. I want to do it with you. No, oh, that's not what I'm talking about. Jeez, man. Does it always have to come to that? 
For ten years, they seemed like the ideal couple, inspiring many with their shared faith and joint ministry. Behind closed doors, things were not as perfect as they seemed. The pressure of keeping up their public image, along with unresolved personal issues, started to strain their marriage. Despite trying to work through their problems, the gap between them grew wider. Eventually, they couldn't hold it together anymore, and they divorced in June 2022. The couple that once looked invincible and perfectly matched had fallen apart, leaving their followers shocked and saddened. After the divorce, things took an even more complicated turn. Michael and Marcia were still living in the same house, a situation made necessary by the need to sell the property and split the proceeds. This living arrangement, however, became a breeding ground for tension and conflict. Despite their best efforts to remain civil, arguments over trivial matters, like electricity usage, escalated. Michael got more and more frustrated, thinking Marcia and her son Robert were leaving all the lights and appliances on all day just to annoy him. He believed they were making the electric bill skyrocket on purpose, which led to many heated arguments. A house, once a home filled with love and faith, turned into a battleground of unresolved grievances and simmering resentment. Police were called multiple times to document verbal disputes, but no one foresaw the tragedy that was about to unfold. On September 18, 2022, Michael snapped. He left for Orlando, but not before shutting off the power to the house. He cut the electricity at the main switch and put a padlock on the electrical panel so Marsha and Robert couldn't turn it back on. He also changed the locks on the house, locking them out. When Marsha, Robert, and Robert's two young kids aged five and six who were visiting came home, they found they could not get in and had no electricity. Marsha acted quickly. She called a locksmith to change the locks and remove the padlock on the electrical panel to get the power back on. Marcia, feeling threatened, called the police to report the incident, wanting it documented for safety. She informed the authorities that Michael had turned off the power and locked them out, but she had no idea of the impending danger. I just wanted on record that he made an in he didn't physically do anything other than lock us out of the house. But it was an implied threat, and I just want it on record. Michael had set up alerts on the home's security system, so he got a notification that the power was back on. He rushed back to the house, where a confrontation happened. According to Michael, Marcia blocked him from entering, and Robert told him to keep away from his mother, leading to a physical fight. Michael claimed that they both attacked him, and in self-defense, he shot them. Sadly, Robert's two kids saw everything. After the shooting, Michael then called 911, stating he had acted in self-defense. Williams made this 911 call. I had my weapon on me, and while they were attacking me, I had to, basically, I had to, I basically I shot him. You shot him? Yes, I shot him and his mother. But the police found his story unconvincing. The superficial scratches on his body did not align with the severity of his claims, when officers arrived, they found Michael sitting in his car, ready to surrender. Inside the house, Marcia and Robert lay dead, and Robert's two young children were found unharmed, but likely witnesses to the terrifying event. Well, Bridget, this morning, the sheriff's office says that the suspect, Michael Williams, was actually the one who called them in and told them that he shot two people and then remained on scene until deputies got there. We have some body camera video from the deputies showing that scene last night. Keep your hands up above your head. Keep backing forward. Investigators say the suspect was waiting for them when they arrived on scene and surrendered. Michael and Marcia were married for about 10 years. They have no children in common. And Michael gave us a story that he was attacked by Marcia and Robert. And this stemmed from an argument that occurred over the past couple days about the electricity in the house. Michael was upset that he felt that they were leaving the lights on in the house and he went and put a lock on the box outside of the house to which Marcia and her son cut. So he became upset and that started this argument which ultimately resulted in uh, these two people being shot. We have been out there about five times this year for uh, fights or arguments between these two, none of which were physical. We did not make any arrests during those, those incidents. Um, I do want to send my condolences out to the family of these two victims. This was a senseless um, 
murder. And I'll let this picture speak for itself, and we'll release this today. He claims that he was violently attacked by these two. Now, I don't see anything on this guy. Now, I wasn't out there last night, um, but we'll release this picture as well. This does not look like a violent attack to me that warrants being shot multiple times. Those two children were Robert, the stepsons. He says they're working with DCF right now to try to um, interview them, seeing as that they're likely the only witnesses to this case. The police arrested him without incident and charged him with two counts of first-degree murder. The news of the murder shocked the community. Marcia was well-loved and respected, known for her dedication to helping others. Her tragic death along with her sons, left a deep void. This is absolutely senseless. This was an argument over electricity. Investigators say 47-year-old Michael Williams, seen here at his first court appearance at the jail where he's being held without bond, became enraged at the family home on East Parkway near Deland Sunday night. Michael's trial revealed more about the toxic relationship and the events that led to that fateful day. The jury found him guilty of two counts of second-degree murder with a firearm. He now faces up to life in prison. The story of Marcia and Michael Williams is a stark reminder of how quickly a seemingly perfect life can unravel. Their tale, filled with love, conflict, and ultimately tragedy, serves as a cautionary example of the devastating effects of unresolved domestic disputes. Marcia and Robert's deaths were senseless and preventable, highlighting the importance of addressing and resolving conflicts before they escalate into violence. The tragic end of Marcia and her son, Robert, left a deep void in the hearts of their family, friends, and the community. Marcia's vibrant spirit, dedication to helping others, and unwavering faith had touched many lives. Her podcast, Marcia Talks, once a beacon of hope and inspiration, now serves as a bittersweet reminder of the light she brought to the world. Robert, a devoted father and beloved son, shared his mother's passion for their faith and community. Their untimely deaths underscore the devastating impact of domestic violence and the importance of seeking help and ensuring safety. As the community mourns their loss, Marcia and Robert's legacy of love, kindness, and resilience continues to inspire those who knew them. Good morning, how are you? I wanted to wish you all a great day, but I wanted you to take this thought with you as you're going to work today. Um, who influences you when you get up in the morning time? Is it money? Is it your family? Is it um, your situation? Is it oppression? Is it What influences you to get up out of your bed every single morning? I know I would love to just roll over and just go to bed and not wake up, but um, reality, what is influencing you today? If, if Christ is not at your um, forefront in the daytime, you have not laid down the principle of first fruits, meaning that whatever you give to first in the morning, that's what's going to influence you for the rest of the day. I wanted to encourage you that as you get up and you go about your day today, and even though you already started, why don't you make plans for tomorrow to put him first and let him govern the rest of your day? The principle of first fruit is always taught by our pastor, and I love the fact that she teaches the principle of first fruit. First, first fruit is not just at the beginning of the year, beginning of the Hebrew calendar. To me, first fruits starts 24 hours. Every day is a first fruit for me. What is your first fruit today? Who are you giving your first fruits to? And um, I believe it should always be a lifestyle because we have 24 hours to do everything. We have 24 hours to make it right. We have 24 hours to line up our lives. What is your first fruit today? And who is influencing you as you go through your 24 hours? I love talking with you all, and I pray this blesses you, and I pray that tomorrow morning your first fruit will be Jesus Christ and the price that he paid on the cross.
morning good morning i just want to take the time to just have a little short little powwow with you this is coach marcia and i know it is early in the morning but sometimes it does take an early riser in order to get your day going um before you get ready to go to work before you get ready to do anything this morning i just want you to remember that um god has you throughout the day it doesn't matter what it may seem like today it doesn't matter what's going on around the world it doesn't matter what's going on in the economy right now God is still in control and it's just to trust him if if this is the the moment that you'll ever want to think of when to rely on God this is the day to rely on him so have a wonderful day and I will see you tomorrow and let's talk about some stuff this week okay God bless thanks for watching like share comment and subscribe see you in the next video